I want to take this time talk to you about God's prosperity plan. Amen. Thank you. I know some people are happy to hear that. Amen. Third John, and uh, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Did you know that God has a prosperity plan? A prosperity plan that God initiated. He initiated this. This was not man's plan. This was God's plan. Because when you read through the word, you see that God has a plan to prosper his people. Are you God's people today? Yes. He has a plan to prosper you. Amen. He has a plan that's set in his word to bless every single person. Amen. 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 And when I talk about prosperity, my concept of prosperity is based on the Bible. My concept of prosperity is not what the word says. My concept of prosperity is not what someone preached. My concept of prosperity is not what the media says. Because a lot of times when you talk about prosperity, for the most part, it is zero down to money. It is zero down to the number of cars you can drive and the number of houses you can have. But I need you to know that God's concept of prosperity, it's not zero down to money. It is not zero down to how much you can have in the bank and how much money you can spend. It is not zero down to the number of house and, and the number of cars that you can have. And I think that is the reason why this gospel, the people call prosperity gospel, is looked down upon and people speak negatively of this gospel because it has been presented in, an, uh, in a way that is not complete. It has been presented in an incomplete way. Therefore, when you talk about prosperity, people who do not want to hear the subject, they'll shy away and they'll criticize. And they call people prosperity preachers. I would be called a prosperity preacher. If somebody hear me preach and teach, they'll call me a prosperity preacher. But I need you to understand that there is nothing like poverty gospel. See now, there is no poverty gospel. Based on the word of God, there is no poverty gospel. Based on the word of God, there is only prosperity gospel. Amen. Can someone say amen? amen? I mean, look back to when God made Adam. God made him and put him in a beautiful garden. The garden was Eden. Eden is pleasure. I mean, how can you put someone in a garden of pleasure and then you have people talking about poverty? You have people talking about the gospel of poverty when in actual fact there is no gospel of poverty based on the word of God. Everyone that served God was blessed. And I'm not talking about money only. That is part of it. Because what is the essence of having lots of money in the bank when you are dying in two weeks? Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? What is the essence of having lots of money in the bank when your family is falling apart? Your kids are hooked on drugs. What is the essence of having lots of money when your marriage is falling apart? What is the essence of having lots of money when you are incapacitated, you are on an hospital bed unable to move? What will all the money do for you? So prosperity is not Zero down to money and all the physical things you can have. You need to prosper in your health. You need to prosper in your family. You need to prosper on your job. You need to prosper in your mind. You know, some people don't even think for themselves. The devil thinks for them. Is that, that's very true. Some people can't think for themselves. Their minds are not even prospering. People think for them. The devil thinks for them. They are bound in their minds. The devil tells them what to do and they just follow like a goat. People think for them. The devil think for them. 
There is prosperity of the mind. Where your mind is free. Where your mind has been renewed by the word of God. Where you're thinking like Christ. You can have money, but if you can't think like Christ, your money will do you no good. Because when it is all said and done, someone is in control of all that money. See, just to be able to go home, put your head on your pillow and sleep well, that is prosperity. But I tell you, there are people with lots and lots of money that can't sleep at night. Amen. So why the money when you can't even sleep? Tormented in your mind. You can't even think straight. You can't even think like a human being. The money will do you no good. You need to be able to go home tonight. Put your head on your pillow. Sleep well. You don't need the torment of the devil. Can someone say amen? Amen. Let's read this. It says to the elder, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? You prosper in all things. God's concept of prosperity is all encompassing. It covers every aspect of life. Your family, your job, your finances, your health, your mind. Your health, it covers everything. That's why he says here that you may prosper in all things. Not in some, but in all. That is the reason why I'm trying to take your mind away from the whole concept of prosperity. Zero down to money. I want you to see that it is all-encompassing. It covers every aspect of life. Your relationship with your family. Your relationship with your friends. It covers that. That's why the Bible says that you may prosper in all things. Everyone say all things. things. It says here, and be in health just as your soul prospers. So there is prosperity Of the soul. And the prosperity of the soul. It's what determines prosperity in other aspects of life. (laughs) If your soul is suffering. You are not prospering. Your soul is made up of your mind. Everyone say my mind. Your will. Everyone say my will. Your emotions. Everyone say my emotions. Like I said earlier on. Your mind needs to be the mind of Christ. Are you listening to me? Your mind needs to be renewed with the word of God so that you can think like the word of God. If you're bound in your mind, you're not prospering. You may have lots of money, but lots of money, it's not prosperity. No, unfortunately, the word has made us to think that prosperity is how much you have financially. And that's so unfortunate because The church have bought that definition of prosperity when in actual fact God's definition of prosperity, it's not that. Your mind needs to prosper. Your will needs to prosper. Your will is the ability to choose what you want. God is giving everyone choice. The power to choose what you want. Unfortunately, some cannot choose. Other people choose for them. Hello? So there needs to be prosperity in your soul. Amen? 
It says, even as your soul prospers, which means that even financial prosperity should be determined by soulish prosperity. In other words, God shouldn't give you more than what you can handle in your soul. That's why the Bible says to want those who are eager to be rich. They go out of your way to make all kinds of money. It says want them because they lead themselves into perdition. They lead themselves into many hearts. It's a warn them. Tell them to refrain from that. This eagerness and zeal and over ambitiousness to be rich. Tell them not to have that. Let God set the level of your success. Amen. Let me say that again. Let God set the level of your success. It is good to succeed, but let God set the level. In other words, if I'm not succeeding in my soul, there is no need to have all this money that might destroy me. And actually, the money will destroy you if your soul is not ready. That's why you see some people cry, God, why am I not blessed? God, why is this not happening? And why is that not happening? And have you noticed that all the time you cry to God about why things are not happening in your life, God will always take you down to the inward part. God will always refer you to what's happening in your soul. God will always refer you to what's happening within you because God walks from the inside out. Amen. It's about what God does internally, not what God, not, not what God does externally. Because what God do internally will affect the external. See, your situation cannot remain the same externally if you change internally. Because what, hap what happens inside will affect what happens outside. In other words, the outward situation will line up to what happens on the inside. Can someone say amen? amen. So it says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I believe that prosperity is misunderstood by a lot of people. On one hand, you have those who believe poverty is a virtue. Therefore, they don't want to have anything to do with prosperity. They believe poverty is a virtue. They don't want to have anything to do with prosperity. You know why? Because they think prosperity is just about money. That's what they think. They think it's all about money. It's all about having cars and all that. That's why a lot of people criticize. They criticize those who preachers who fly on private jets. They criticize preachers who have lots of money. They criticize and criticize and criticize. And there you are criticizing and writing all kinds of things on social media. But you're sitting in front of your laptop. Writing on your laptop. Criticizing a man who is blessed. If you criticize a man who is blessed, but you are there sitting in front of your laptop, you also need to understand that there are those in the villages, villages of Africa who have never seen a laptop. You know what I'm talking about? In other words, in other words if you have the gods to criticize those who are, being, who are blessed more than you, you also must sell your laptop or don't even have a laptop. Because so the people in the villages of Africa... Someone having, that has a laptop is rich. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I mean, here is this guy. He hasn't seen a laptop. He doesn't even know anything about internet. When he sees you sitting in front of your laptop, he thinks you are wealthy. And there you are criticizing someone who is doing better than you. In other words, no one has the right to criticize. God is a God of excess. Can someone say amen? amen? God is a God that blesses his people exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. Can someone say amen? amen? Now, if you want to criticize a guy who is living well, first get rid of your laptop. And move into the village. And live in abject poverty. And then you have the right to criticize. See now. Now, you put things in perspective, people understand. Because it's easy to sit there and write and criticize a man of God. It's, it's easy to sit there and criticize a man who is doing well in business. Well, look at all the money they have. It's easy to do that. But you have a laptop worth a thousand U.S. dollars. 
And some people have never seen a thousand US dollars for 50 years of their whole life. <laughs> to them, you are wealthy. So they have the right to criticize you too. You get what I'm saying? Because if we have to go about that, then everyone has a problem. See, prosperity was not man's idea. Neither is poverty man's idea. Both did not come from man. God's idea is to prosper man. The devil's idea is to put man in poverty. None of these came from man. Are you listening to me? Here James said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper. Why do you think James is writing this? I mean, John, I'm sorry. Why do you think John is writing this? John is writing this because he understood the plan of God for man. I mean, look at Abraham. Do you think he was prosperous? Do you think he was a success? Look at Isaac. Do you think Isaac was a success? Look at Jacob. Do you think Jacob was a success? Look at Joseph. Do you think Joseph was a success? It is the will of God for you to succeed. I say it again. I say this is the will of God for you to succeed. Now, now be careful what you say when you see people blessed. Because you can't go to where you criticize. <laughs> you cannot go to a place, you can't go to a place you hate. You can't go to a place you don't like. Is that correct? If you don't like prosperity, you can't go there. You need to begin to embrace this. It is the will of God for you to prosper. Some people are still thinking about this. Is it really true? Is it the will of God? Yes, I'm, I'm yet to announce to you, it is the will of God for you to prosper. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So on one hand, you have those who think prosperity is evil. But it's not evil. Prosperity is good. Because I'm not talking about money alone. Talking about your health. Talking about your mind. Talking about your soul. Talking about your emotions. That's what I'm talking. That's what prosperity is. When you prosper internally, you will prosper externally. Amen. So see, don't, don't be too... too don't be too eager to prosper externally. Ask the Lord to change you inside. Because when you are changed internally, there's nothing ex external that can stop you. That's why God says, I'll go before you. I'll make the crooked places straight. I'll break in pieces the gates of brass. I'll cut asunder the bars of iron. I'll loose the loins of kings. And they'll open before you the double doors. And the gates will not be shut. I'll give you the treasures of darkness. And hidden riches of secret places. When you allow God to take the lead, you have no problem. You allow God to change you on the inside. You have no problem. You just follow the Lord. And he'll make the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. But no, if you're seeking it yourself, you will lead the way and you put God behind. And I can guarantee you, you're going to meet with devils you can't deal with. But you let God lead. You let God make a way. You let God open the doors. You let the Lord bless you. You let him set the level of your prosperity. Can someone say amen? amen. 
When it is time for you to handle a hundred thousand, let him bring it. When it is time for you to handle a million, he'll bring it. When it's time for you to handle a billion, he'll bring it. So walk on changing on the inside. Everyone say inside. inside. That is where the work begins. When God changes you on the inside, your mind, your will, your emotions are changed and transformed and you begin to operate like God, nothing can stop you. Can someone say amen? Let me, let me tell you this. God's prosperity plan does not answer to prayer and has no respect to fasting. Let me say that again. God's prosperity plan does not answer to prayer and has no respect to fasting. You can do a 40-day fast because you want to prosper. But I want to tell you, it is not going to help. Because releasing faith in this arena is based on the word of God. And let me read that. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. This is what it says. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. While the earth remains. This, this was hilarious. One time Pastor Corey was preaching this in the Turkish service. And in the Turkish Bible, when it say, here, here it says, while the earth remains. In the Turkish Bible, it comes out this way. While the earth stands. And so Pastor asked the question, is the earth still standing? Somebody answered from the congregation, no, the earth is not standing, the earth is spinning. <laughs> <laughs> While the earth stands, the earth is not standing, it's spinning. That's the wrong, play, wrong time to answer the question. <laughs> While the earth remains, while the earth is standing, it says in the Turkish version, and the earth is not standing, it's spinning, it's turning. The guy was right. <laughs> but God's prosperity plan don't answer to prayer and fasting. You can fast, pray all you want, but you have to understand it answers to the word. It says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Everyone says seed time. Harvest time. Seed time, harvest time. Even with your soul prospering, there must be sowing into your soul. You can't produce out of your soul what you don't have in it. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus said a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit. It is what you have inside that you produce. The Bible says to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows issues of life. So it's what you have in your soul that you will produce. That's why a lot of people don't prosper on the outside, because they are not prospering inside. Oh, Jesus, help me. The reason why a lot of people can't prosper on the outside is because they are not prospering on the inside. It is what you have inside that you can produce. See, money don't just fall on your laps. Are you listening to me? When the enemy comes and attacks you, the word don't just come to you right there and then when the devil attacks you. The word must be in you first and when the devil comes three months later, the word will be popping out of your spirit. It's what you have inside that you can produce. Can someone say amen? amen? If it is not there, it is not there. Praise the Lord. It has to be inside. So seed time and harvest. So there is a time to sow and there is a time to harvest. Unfortunately, people want to harvest, but they haven't sown anything. 
you have to sow first before you harvest. Sow into your mind. Sow into your where? You're not saying it well. Because some people don't want to sow into their minds. They just want to prosper. But how can you prosper when you haven't sown into your mind? Someone taught me this many years ago. He said, look, watch this now. He said, he said this is the way it works. Listen now. I'm going to teach you something. He says, here you are coming from this direction. Okay? You are. You are the man. You're coming from this direction. And God is coming from the other direction. You are both going to meet in the middle. Okay? Now, while you're coming from this direction, you need to do all you have to do as a man. Because unfortunately, everybody leaves it on the Lord. There's something you have to do as a human. Is that correct? Good. Now, God is coming from this side and he does most of it. He doesn't do all of it. He does the harder part. He doesn't do all of it. Did you understand that? Now, both of you are going to meet in the middle. Here in the middle is what God, where God wants you to get to. And he's going to assign you to do things that will take your life to a whole new level. By the time you meet with the Lord here in the middle and you've not done what you're supposed to do, when you get here and the Lord said, this is what I want you to do, you won't be able to do it because you're not ready. I mean, people ask the Lord to do this and do that and bless me and do this and open this door, open that door. Here's my question. If the Lord opens the door, what will you do? <laughs> no, no, no. If the Lord opens that door, the door you've been asking him to open, if he opens it right now, what will you do with the door? You walk into the door, what will you do there? See, that's why, see, Joseph, it took him 13 years to prepare. It took Joseph 13 years to prepare. The day he met with Pharaoh and he was made the prime minister, he was ready. Yeah. It took him 13 years. He was preparing all this while. He was in the house of Potiphar. He was preparing. He was in prison. He was preparing. The day he came out of prison, he became the prime minister, but he was ready. And you will see throughout his life in Egypt, he was a success. David anointed king at the age of 16, but did not sit on the throne. It took him years to prepare for that. He was getting ready for over 10 years. He was getting ready. And the day he sat on the throne, he became the greatest king Israel ever had in the natural. There is time to prepare. There is time to sow. There is time to get ready. That's why I was taught... That when I'm coming from my direction, I'm coming to meet with the Lord in the middle. I need to get myself ready because the day will come when God will open the massive door I've been praying for. Amen. Now what happens when he opens the door? I can't be empty here. The Bible says through skillful wisdom, a house is built. No skillful wisdom? How do you build it? No house. No skillful wisdom? You will tear the house down. You will even destroy what the Lord has given. Everybody wants the door to open for them. And we pray that the door opens for you. But we are also bringing a balance. There is a balance. Doors don't just open. The Bible says, see a man who is, who is diligent in his work. He shall stand before kings. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says, take note of that man who is diligent in what he does. He shall stand before kings. There's work to be done. Say to your neighbor, there's work to be done. (laughs) 
do what you need to do. See, don't bother about God. God is ready every time. God is ready all the time. 24-7. God don't go to sleep. God is ready all the time. We are the ones to get ready. He says, I'm the Lord, I don't change. So we are the ones that need to change. We are the ones that need to change the way we think. We are the ones that need to see things like God sees them. We are the ones that need to adapt to God's ways. Can someone say amen? Amen. (laughs) Is this helping anybody here today? Pastor, you want to jump in? (laughs) Pastor, please. (laughs) We're a team. (laughs) I think it's good because what had come to me before you even begin to speak, we'll be right on this. So stick around, but let's see here. <laughs> you going to stick around there? You want me to stick around? It might take a while. <laughs> stick around over there. <laughs> I like the fact that you begin to speak about prosperity of the soul because what had been come what had come to me I was going to touch on was <laughs> divine favor wow that's a few are excited about that <laughs> divine favor listen 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 this is exactly what you've been speaking about proverbs 23 7 says for as he thinks in his heart so is he as you think so are you. You become who you think you are on the inside. That's why you have to prosper in your soul. It has to happen in here, how you begin to see yourself. I mean, I was touching on this a little bit on Wednesday night. I don't know how some people took it. I was talking about, you know, how several years ago I made a decision from now on, I'm done flying economy. I'm going to fly business class from now on for the rest of my life. It was just a decision I made. And it's just, you know, I just got... And I used to fly business when I was in the secular world, world, you know, working with uh, consulting companies. But then I got in the ministry. Now I think that I have to fly economy. Why? Why? No, it's just how you see yourself. You know? No, I'm going to fly business class. That's it. It's just I'm going to believe God and I'm going to do that. And that's how it is. You know, it's how you see yourself. And it's just, it's a decision you make because you are who you think you are. You know, if you, don't deserve, if you don't think you deserve it, then you're not going to have it. And whatever you call expensive, you'll never have. It's too expensive. You'll never have it. It's too expensive. You'll never have it. So whatever is in your spirit is what will manifest on the outside. This is exactly what I have here. Whatever is in your spirit is what will manifest on the outside. So what do you have in your spirit? If you haven't sown into your spirit, nothing's going to come out of it. People expect to be led by the Holy Ghost, but they've never sown the word into their spirit. The Holy, Holy Ghost uses the word that's in your spirit. If there's no deposit in there. There's nothing for, for the Holy Ghost to pull out of because the Holy Spirit works with the word and illuminates the word, helps you to understand the word, and helps you to walk in The word that you understand. You can only walk in the light that you have. And some Christians, they're just walking with a match light, you know, through life. I mean, how much light you have is what you're going to walk in. So the more light you have, the more revelation you have, the more faith you're going to have. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith doesn't come from the word you don't know and you don't understand. Faith only comes from the word you know and you understand. And so faith is a result of what's on the inside of you. That's why when the disciples came to Jesus and asked him to increase their faith, he just started to teach them. He just began to teach them. When he went into Decapolis, 
and there was not enough faith, he went around all the towns teaching. Teaching, because people didn't have faith because they didn't have the word. They were ignorant to the plan and purpose of God for their lives. They were ignorant to the word of wisdom, to the word of faith. So when they heard the word, their faith began to increase. That's why the word has to be planted into you in order, or, 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 or sown into you in order for it to, to begin to bear fruit in your life. And you have to humbly receive the word, which is able to save your soul or to renew your mind. You have to be humble. When you're unteachable, when you're so prideful, when you think you know everything, you're full of yourself, you're not going to grow. So you have to be humble and you have to become teachable. You have to, you know, the, and the problem with a lot of times when trying to put the word into people is first they have to forget what they already know before you can teach them. That's why sometimes it's just easier to take a brand new believer that didn't even grow up in church and to begin to teach them. And then, and then when you begin to talk to them about, you know, religion and what goes on, and they just look at you like, huh? Because they don't understand. They've never seen it. But when people come out of religion, their minds are already full of so much junk, they have to first unlearn. And it takes even longer for, them, for those people because they have to unlearn. They have to get, to get the junk out of their heads before they can begin to learn. Amen? So look at this. Proverbs 8, verse 5. Yet you have made him but a little, little lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have been made just a little lower than God or the heavenly beings, and you have been crowned with glory and honor. See, do you even realize that? And then John chapter 17, verse 22. Look at this, John 17, 22. Jesus speaking. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. Jesus says, I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me. The same glory and honor the Lord Jesus Christ has sitting at the right hand of the Father has been given to you. Amen. He says, I have given them the same glory and honor you have given me. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. And just as the Father has sent me, I send you. No, you didn't get that. Because I might have to repeat it 11 times for you to get it. Because now, you know, all the religious junk is manifesting in some people's heads. And they didn't hear it because it comes in this ear, but it goes through the filter. So, in Jesus' name, I remove that religious filter from your head. Take off those religious dark sunglasses right now. Where everything looks dark in your life. Everything's always depressed and dark because you, you got the wrong glasses on. Let me see those right there, brother. You're walking through life. It didn't, they didn't go well with me. Everything's so dark. Everything's so dark. Where's the photographer? You... I probably look terrible. They don't. They're huge. Are these ladies' glasses? <laughs> no, I don't want to be. <laughs> Remove those glasses. Everything's so dark. You got the. You're looking through those dark glasses of religion and tradition, and you can't really see. <laughs> look at this john chapter 12 john chapter 12 verse 26 if anyone serves me he must continue to follow me to cleave steadfastly to me 
conform wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying and wherever I am there will my servant be also if anyone serves me the father will honor him if any man serve Jesus he says my father will honor him so take off discouragement defeat doubt and depression you are crowned with glory and honor say this after me I am crowned with glory and honor you see, God has no limitations. You have to change your negative confession of doubt and unbelief. You have to keep saying, there is a river of favor flowing to me. Come on, say this after me. There is a river of favor flowing into my life. Hallelujah. You have to confess favor, that you have divine favor because you have been crowned with glory and honor. I have divine favor. I am blessed or I am favored going in. I am blessed. Or I am favored going out. Hallelujah. I am favored. I'm favored. So you have to say, everywhere I go, people roll out the red carpet for me. They bend over backwards to come to my help, to come to my assistance. Right when they're about to say yes, the no becomes yes. They, they want to say no, but they can't. Yes. That almost sounds like some African tongue. Yes. They can't say no. Because you, ha you have favor. You have favor. You have favor. You have favor. You have to confess favor. You have to believe that you have favor. You have to believe that you are going to be highly favored. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So things, when you get upgrades, it shouldn't surprise you because you are favored. Amen. Amen. When people want to help you, you shouldn't be surprised because you have favor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to get the job that everybody wants. You're going to get the project that everybody wants. You're going to get the house that everybody wants. Because you have favor. So stop worrying about things and just confess that you have favor. Favor, 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 favor. You become a favor magnet when you begin to confess it. Hallelujah. Just say this after me. I am a favor magnet. People roll out the red carpet for me. Because I'm a king. Or you might say I'm a queen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, don't claim to be queens. Don't do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. They roll out the red carpet for me. Amen. Say people bend over backwards to help me. They go out of their way to help me. To give into my life. Because I have favor. I have been crowned with glory and honor. I walk under a shower of divine favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Jesus said his words are spirit and life. John 6, 63. He says, my words are spirit and life. So the word of God is spirit and life. When spoken out of your mouth, it releases something. It changes something in the atmosphere. It changes something in the realm of the spirit. It changes something in your life. If you want divine life, you're going to have to speak it. You can have the natural life. I used to preach this message. High life versus low life. You can have the low life. You can be a low life. <laughs> or you can have the high life. Amen. Amen. How many of you want to live the high life? You have to believe you deserve it. You have to believe you have to see yourself in it. Not just say it, but you have to see yourself in it. And the more you say it, the more it becomes, gets into your spirit. Because whatever is on the inside is what's going to manifest on the outside. Everything you have right now is what you have believed in the past. And if you don't like what you have right now, then you better change what you believe. Everything you have right now is a result of the seeds you've sown in the past. If you don't like the harvest, change the seed you're sowing. There's no need to complain. Oh, look at my life. Oh, stop complaining. Change it. God's giving you the power to speak words that will change your life. 
God's giving you the power to sow seeds that will change your life. You have been crowned with glory and honor. You have to believe that you have favor. And you have to speak that you have favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak favor and success over your life. When you, when you do that, and you continually do that, and hold fast onto the confession, your spirit will revive and affect everything around you. People will even act differently to you. People will begin to act differently to you because people will treat you the way you see yourself. Some people, all they do is complain, complain, complain. And woe unto me, they always are in a, always having a pity party and they wonder why they're never treated right because they don't even see themselves right. They only expect to be abused. And they always have, a, have, a, have an excuse because their father locked them in the refrigerator while they were little and their, half of their brain froze or something. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Don't be a slave to your past. Listen. I'm not, I'm not being, you know, I do have compassion. If you've been abused, but you can be healed and get past it. You don't have to live in that realm anymore. As a matter of fact, you are a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, everything's made new. Stop, oh, stop looking for some generational curse from your past. From your grandfather, from your great-grandfather, whatever. Forget it. You are a new creature in Christ. My God, there was this teaching going around. Everything was a generational curse. You got a toothache, toothache because of some generational curse. I mean, how many times do you have to break generational curses? You do it once and it's over. You just make a declaration. I am a new creature in Christ. I am part of a new family. And my family lineage goes straight to my Father in heaven who has crowned me with glory and honor. Glory to God. That's it. That's it. I have divine favor because... God is my father. I'm a child of the most high God. Amen. If you serve him, Jesus says, if you serve him, if you serve him, my father will honor you. Hallelujah. So, people will act differently to you if you begin to speak differently about yourself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know Numbers chapter 6, don't you? Verse 25. Maybe it doesn't come to your mind right now, but when I begin to read it, the Lord make his face to shine upon you Amen. and enlighten you and be gracious, kind, merciful, and giving favor to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace tranquility of heart and life continually amen. amen hallelujah say this after me the lord makes his face lord, to, shine me, to shine upon me to enlighten me to be gracious to me to be kind to me to be merciful to me giving me favor the lord lift up his countenance upon me to give me peace Tranquility of heart and life continually. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe you have favor? Do you believe you have divine favor? In? So when you walk into a place, walk in like to that place like you own it. Walk into that place like you're in charge of that place. Walk into that place because with all authority in heaven and earth. Your father who owns the cattle on a thousand hills owns that place. The earth is the Lord's and all that is within it. It's his footstool. Amen. So walk into that place like you own that place. Amen. Don't walk in going there. Just being humble. No, you're just being foolish. Just being religious. Stick your chest out. 
stand up straight. Because if you do this, the crown will fall off your head. So you better have a straight up posture so the crown stays on. Walking like you're walking on a red carpet into that place. Amen. Hallelujah. Having the angels of the Lord lined up to guard your way. To make sure that you don't dash your foot against the stone. They're going to hold you up in their hands. They're encamped about you to protect you. You walk in and you claim favor. I am blessed. I am fruitful. I will multiply in this place. I will increase. I will fill this place. And I will take over and have dominion in this place. That's what it means to be blessed. So you're going to walk in that way and claim that you have favor. Divine favor. Divine favor. You're not going to pay earthly prices. You're going to pay heavenly prices. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When everybody else is in panic mode, you're fine. You're covered. No problem. You get divine discounts. You get divine help. You get divine assistance. Hallelujah. You have divine intervention. Glory to God. Say this after me. I have divine intervention in my life. The Lord gives His angels charge over me. He releases His angels who are ministering spirits. They will minister for me because I have inherited salvation. Hallelujah. You have to believe that. 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 Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Shout like you believe it. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace, favor, and spiritual blessing of God was upon him. Hallelujah. Say this after me. I am growing, becoming strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace, favor, and spiritual blessing of God is upon me hallelujah you have to confess favor you have to confess success you have to confess provision you have to confess open doors you have to confess blessing amen you have to confess increase hallelujah hallelujah you have to confess you're going to the next level you're not going backwards you're going forwards hallelujah you're being changed from glory onto glory amen you're going to a new level of glory hallelujah hallelujah your father will honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you do in secret, he will honor you publicly. Glory to God. So you just be faithful. Amen. You just be faithful. You serve him. You serve him with your whole heart. Amen. And he will honor you before man. Hallelujah. He will lift you up for all to see as a shining light. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. Hallelujah. He'll be gracious to you. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll favor you. Amen. He'll favor you. Amen. When you're in the back of the line, you'll be moved to the front of the line. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're, hallelujah. When your paper's at the bottom of the pile, your papers will be moved up to the top of the pile. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. People that owe you money will start looking for you to give you the money. You won't have to be looking for them. They'll come looking for you. They'll come looking for you. They'll come. I was preaching this one time. I began to have people begin to confess this some years ago. And then this brother came to me about a week later. He said, Pastor, there was this guy that owed me money from a business from five years ago. I looked for him. It took me two, three years. And I finally gave up on it. This week, he said, when I begin to speak and confess, he called me. He says, I've got to come and give you this money I've owed you for five years. This was an unbeliever. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he will turn it whichever way he wishes. So you begin to speak it. Say, money is coming to me. Hallelujah. You have unclaimed money. You have unclaimed, unclaimed harvest. Some of you have given up. No, 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 no. It's time for a resurrection. It's time. You better speak life to it. You better speak resurrection to it. 
is coming, is coming, is coming. Hallelujah. 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 Amanda was telling me that she had sown an iPad and she kind of had forgotten about it. And one of these Sundays I was preaching about you have unclaimed harvest. And the Lord reminded him about the iPad that she, she had sown. And she, so right there in the service, she claimed an iPad. The next day she gets a phone call from her mother saying, somebody in church came to me today and gave me this iPad to give to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What do you need? Have you spoken it? Have you called it in? Have you called it in or are you just sitting around complaining about it? Uh, what am I going to do in this situation? Why, why don't I have this? No, 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 no. That's the wrong speech. That's the wrong way of thinking. That's the wrong way of speaking. You got to get the right thinking and right speaking. Amen. You got to call it in. You got to call in the harvest. You got to call in the harvest on your seed. But you better make sure you have some seed in the ground. But you got to claim favor. you got to claim that you have favor. And God even gives seed to the sower. So even stop complaining about the fact that you don't have seed. Ask for seed. Say, Lord, give me seed to sow. And he'll give you seed. When you are a sower, he'll give you seed. When you have decided to sow, he'll give you the seed. He'll bring you the seed to sow. Amen. So claim favor. Claim favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that you have favor with both God and man. Hallelujah, I have favor with both God and man. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> May Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints god's devoted people the experience of them of that love what is the breath the length the height the depth of it that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. And as a result of that, now unto him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly glory to God. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I don't know if that, if that doesn't stir you up, your wood is wet. I don't know what to tell you. If that doesn't get you shouting, if that doesn't get you jumping around, I don't know what else I'm going to tell you. My God. My God. Hey, bro, say, canta la mande borong galaba. May you be filled and flooded with God Himself. Woo, bro, say, kelamondo. May you experience the love of God that goes just beyond reason. Experience His goodness. Experience His love. Experience His blessing. Experience His favor and divine, super abundant provision. Ah. Hey! Super abundant! Super abundant! Not just abundant, super abundant! Ha! 
Favor. Favor. You feel it, brother. Come here. Favor. Hallelujah. 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 The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. The riches, the riches, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. My God, Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, flooded with light, flooded with divine light so that you may understand, that you may understand, you may know the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints. <laughs> Hallelujah. The hope, the hope of His calling. The hope of His calling. He's called you into a hope. Hallelujah. His thoughts are much higher than your thoughts. His plans are much higher than your plans. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you. Not to harm you. You have to say, thank you, Lord, you have plans to prosper me. Hallelujah. He's making plans in heaven right now to prosper you. Hallelujah. And he's speaking to his angels to go on your behalf, to minister on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's crowned you with glory and honor. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My God, what more do you need? You have, the, you have the promise. You have the word. You just have to claim it. You have to speak it. You have to speak it. You have to boldly speak it. Boldly speak it. I had divine favor. Hallelujah. 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 You're not going to have to go through the same process that everybody else in the world has to go through to get to where they're trying to get to because you will just follow the Lord. Amen. You will seek after His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Not subtracted from your life. Added to your life. And multiplied. And multiplied. And increased. Super abundantly. I love that word. Maybe we should change the name of the church to Super Abundant Church or something. I, I just love it. Super Abundant. Never heard Super Abundant. I've heard Abundant Life. I, think, I, don't, I don't think it does enough justice. I, I think it needs to be Super Abundant Life. Super Abundant Life. Hallelujah. Super Abundant Life. Hallelujah. Super Abundant Life. Hallelujah. Super Abundant Super abundant life makes you a superwoman. Hallelujah. Yes, brother. Take some super abundant life. I mean, just have a smack of super abundance upon you right now. My God. I feel like shaking some people. Super abundant. Super abundant. Glory to God. Super abundant. Super abundant. Super abundant. Super abundant. Super, 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 super abundant. Super, 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 super abundant. My God, my God, I feel like Superman right now. Glory to God, super abundant. Super abundant. Glory to God, super, super abundant. Super, hallelujah. Super, super, super abundant. Take a smack of some super abundance. Take some more super abundance. Just a smack, smack. Oh, Rabash the Kendale, a rain. Hallelujah. 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 Come here. You want some more super abundance? Super abundance. Hallelujah. You want some super abundance? Hallelujah. Sheparaganda Badonga Leniste Kalabanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Super abundant. Super abundant. Super abundant. Hamro Shekele Mahandalaya. Rehe Setomba Galanji Badanga Borondi Biasta. 
super abundant. I mean, if you don't sow into that word, I don't know what's going to get you moving. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait on me. Glory to God. You don't have to wait on me. I don't have to say, you know, come on in. Who needs an envelope? You just got to sow into this word right now. This is a, I, I feel super abundance right now being released. I, I, divine favor is being released. Super abundance. Super abundance. A super abundance released. A super abundance. A super abundance. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Confess favor. Confess success. Hallelujah. Confess provision. Confess open doors. Confess blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. We thank you for your word says, and God is able to make all grace, all grace, all grace abound towards us. All grace, all grace, grace in every area, grace in everything we do, grace to succeed, grace to excel. Grace to expand, grace to birth, grace to go to the next level, grace, grace, grace in every area, grace in everything we do, grace in your business, grace in your family in Jesus' mighty name. We release grace here in the name of Jesus, grace, unmerited favor, divine favor, divine grace, divine grace, stepping into your life, stepping into your case, stepping into your circumstance, divine grace. Lift your hands and receive grace, divine, divine, divine. Grace, grace to do what you can't do. Grace to empower you. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, you move forward, you step forward, you move ahead in life. You no more stuck from today. In the name of Jesus, I command that you come unstuck in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, everything that's been standing in your way, I command. In Jesus' name, they are removed right now. The grace of God is released. 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 And as grace is released, you are released. As the grace is released, you are released. You are released to go forward. You are released to excel. You are released to conquer. You are released to defeat your enemies. You are released to... Go forward in victory. You are released to excel and to rise. You are released to victory in the name of Jesus. And God makes his grace abound towards you even now. Even now. And I decree and declare that as you go into this week, you're going in and stepping in with grace. <laughs> you're stepping in with grace. You're stepping into your office with grace. You're stepping into that company with grace. You're stepping into your business with grace. Everything will come as a result of grace. Grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace, grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace to do the impossible. Grace to do the impossible. The impossible will be done by grace. Will be done by grace. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, mercy, care, man, bros. Just keep worshiping him. Just worship him. Worship him. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We honor you. We worship you. This. We worship you today. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Who? Thank you, Jesus. We worship, we worship, we worship. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship. God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Let your power fall. Let your fire fall in this place. Even as we've talked about the hearts of people, I thank you, Lord, that's a purifying work that's taking place even now. Right now, that you're pu purifying the hearts of people here this, this day, changing our motives, changing our hearts. We thank you. We thank you. Giving us the right perspective. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is able and more than able To accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able. He can handle anything that comes my way. He is able. More than able to do much more than I can ever dream. He's able, is more than able to make me what he wants me to be he is able more than able he can handle anything that comes my way he's able he's able more than able he can handle anything that comes my way. He's able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He's able, more than able, he can make me what he wants me to be. 